All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Today our topic is about ethic. Um, there is many articles written by Muslims speaking about Islam teaching ethic. And for sure Muslims claim that Islam is a religion of ethic. And there is many naive, uh, especially between the Christians, who they believe that Muslims, they share a lot of ethic with us. As an example, <coughs> uh, you cannot steal in Islam. But what they will not tell you, that you cannot steal from a Muslim or from somebody paying jizya, which means he is protected because he pay money. You can steal from a Christian, from a Jew, from a Hindu, from a Buddha. It is halal. And actually, Muhammad is the biggest thief, famous thief in history. If we go back in the history of Muhammad, you will see that he, first job he was doing after he announced himself as a prophet, is to attack caravan and to steal. And why it is lawful? The Muslim, they will say to you, well, they kick them out from their homes. So now it's time for them to get back what they lost. The fact they left as immigrant and they took everything with them and Muhammad the Muslim they claim that they kicked him out and this is a big fat lie again Muhammad he left willingly because he was rejected between his people and if his people want to kill him it's very easy to kill him he was very you know he have only few supporters and it's easy to wrap them all in one night and kill them all but in fact, his people, they were nice to him, especially they are his people. Remember, Muhammad was living in a tribe, which means this is his family. Literally, it's a family. It's not a city where there's many people who they are not relative to each other. Everybody there is a family. They are cousins. If you want to see really what is the ethic of Islam, then you have to study something, present Islam. As an example, in front of us, in the screen, we have a, a party. It's called Hizb al-Tahrir. Hizb al-Tahrir is the same as ISIS, and it exists in every Western country. The difference between this party and ISIS, they did not participate yet in any attack inside Europe or America. But they are heavily involved in Syria, and they have thousands and thousands of fighters. And they are heavily involved in Indonesia, and they have thousands of members who are fighters there. They have a training camps for fighting and killing. We ask ourselves a question, if Islam teach ethic, so under what ethic ISIS was kidnapping women, enslaving women, capturing people, beheading, killing, cutting hands, all my friend is Islamic very Islamic all is according to Allah teaching so the ethic of the Muslim they try to present to you if you remember yesterday we have a guy his name is Ali and when we showed him the muta that he's a prophet he practiced muta which means you can do one night stand but the Muslim they say to you do you know in Islam we don't approve adultery but the fact Islam is the religion of adultery the difference between normal adultery and Islamic adultery is the following. Islam legalize adultery and make rules for it, which means if you do it in the right way, you're fine. When we showed you yesterday <clears throat> how Muhammad, he says, any man, any woman, they like to have sex together, not marriage, as they claim. They can but yet the Muslims they brag about we cover our women and we make them wear burqa because we are very protective our wife our women our daughter she have to wear hijab but look at this cult the women she can rent her vagina for one night or one hour or two hours and she have to get paid one of the rules of this what is called muta is you have to pay the women the female for the sex job she will do to you and actually even the Quran says 
which means the what, pay them because of what you enjoy yet, not her. Enjoy yet, which means her vagina. And yet they brag a lot about Muslim women that she is a protected. She is, uh, you know, uh, she. We have more. We have ethic. We have a very a lot of ethic. You remember when we showed to the Muslims how Muhammad ordering women to give their breast to stranger adult men to suck it and supposedly this is ethical even the wife of Muhammad as you see in the screen Aisha herself she uh, she did not allow anyone to enter upon her unless he go and suck the nipples of her sisters and she he have to do it in 10 different days until he is satisfied and this was a verse in the Quran, if you remember, but the goat ate it. And here you notice the other unethical teaching. Muslim, they say, and they lie to us, they say the Quran was preserved. But then we find that there is more than 80 to 85 percent of the Quran is gone. Either it's eaten by the goat or destroyed totally and nobody knows how to find it. But they lie to us and they keep bragging about their Quran never been destroyed and it is preserved. So now if we ask a Muslim, can you recite for me the stoning verse or the breast feeding for adult 10 time or even the verse who came after it, which means to abrogate, which is five time. And you will notice here that the prophet of God who is coming supposedly from the same God of Moses and the same God of Isa as they call him Jesus supposedly Isa yet he is teaching that the Muslim women she can give her breast to a man but yet they speak too much about ethic here you see the story where Muhammad he order a woman who have a man who enter upon her house and her husband he don't like that and Muhammad he advise her to give her nipples and her breast to this man so he can suckle it. But remember, this woman, she is not even, she doesn't have baby suckle what? I mean, there's no milk there anyway. I mean, why a man in the world want to suckle a woman? What does this have to do with the, 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 the husband is jealous. He don't like to see this man entering the house. The solution, we ordered the women to suckle a man who is an adult. The woman, she said to him, how I can suckle him? And he is a growing man. So they speak too much about ethic. What is the ethic of Muhammad? What about Muhammad raping women, kidnapping women and killing children? One of the lies proving that Islam does not teach ethic which we hear always from Muslim, they say, we don't kill children. The fact the Quran confirmed that and the Hadith confirmed that. The Muslims, when they attack any tribe, they take all the women and the children as the slaves. And the children, in, in order to be considered as a children or a child, so you will not be killed, you will be taken as a slave, is not to have hair around your private part so if you have a hair around your private part you will be slaughtered immediately and as you know we as a Middle Eastern and I am a Middle Eastern as you know we are hairy people so you will have hair in a very early age very early age so you can here assume that they are killing people in the age of six and seven and even maybe eight or nine the second they see a hair around, when they attack uh, any area, the Muslim, this is the ethic of the Muslims. They order all the male to strip, for sure the male, the female for sex anyway, they will strip. But all the male have to strip immediately, including the children. And they walk by them, and then the one, he have little grown hair around his pubic area, they mark him to stand in the side. And those who they are not to grow in this hair yet, they put them in the other side and those will be taken as slaves. 
But I never heard of a Muslim is not saying that in Islam we forbid killing children. Actually, even in the Quran, if you remember, where uh, a prophet, his name is Al Khudr, Allah, he taught Musa to go and learn from him the wisdom of Allah. And what is the wisdom of Allah? One of the wisdom of Allah that if you have a child and you fear that he might not be good, you fear, you don't even saw anything yet from him. You just simply slaughter him. As simple as that. So when the Muslim they speak about uh, you know, you know, we can we can like uh, you know Muslims they will say to you that uh, we are misquoting. We cannot be misquoting. This is Islamic interpretation. Unless you are saying I'm misquoting the interpretation, that would be funny. They saw a young boy playing with others, and then the Prophet of Allah, who Allah taught him wisdom better than the wisdom of Musa's, he slew him by slitting his throat with a knife while he lay down or by tearing his head off with his head or by smashing his head against the wall. And why is that? If you go a few verses after, Musa's he asked this man, which is he is his master now, why you did that? Why you killed this uh, little child? I mean, what what he did? The the uh, the one we call him Al, uh, Al Khadr. He said, "Well, this child, we fear that he will be disobedient. He will not be good, and even he might leave Islam. So we slaughtered him. But the child did not do anything wrong yet." What kind of ethic is to kill a child who is a Muslim? He did not commit a crime. Before he commit the crime, just because I fear that the child will not be good when he grow up. That is an ethic. The Muslims always, they fabricate stories trying to convince you that Islam treat Christians nicely. Islam did not teach killing or rape or humiliation of the Christians. Islam protected the Christians. The fact Islam took our land and forced us as Arab Christians to speak the language of the Quran, not the Arabic language, because the Quran language is different. It's, it is the language of Quraysh. And they force you to use their names. They force you to practice <coughs> their tradition. They force you to live under their command. They force you to pay jizya. They force you to be humiliated every day, every morning, every night. For very simple reason, for you are a Christian. Not because you commit any crime. The Muslim, they will quote for you from the Quran a verse saying, if you kill an innocent person as if he killed all mankind, but what they will not tell you, that an innocent person in Islam is a Muslim. Not a Christian. If you are a Christian, you are guilty. If you are a Jew, you are guilty. If you are, if you are anything except a Muslim, you are guilty and you have to be slaughtered. So they lie to you and they say, Islam have an ethic. Look at this ethic here as an example. Anyone is not a Muslim, he is dirty. You see here they are translating in English that Mushrikeen, Mushrikeen is us. According to Muslims, we are Mushrikeen. What Mushrikeen mean? You associate someone with God, with Allah. First of all, we don't believe in Allah. Secondly, we don't associate God with God. We believe in one God. So even that is a stupid lie about us. But because we are not Muslims, we are, according to the translation in front of you, impure. In fact, the Quran says in Arabic, najis. Najis is the most insult to say to a human being, which means you are filthy to the point if we wash you from now until next century, you will not be clean. And this is why you will find in Mecca, signs 
says Christians or like I mean in the road in the highway in Saudi Arabia this is the ethic of Islam imagine if we have signs in USA or signs in any country says the Christians only Muslims only This is the ethic of Islam which nobody want to talk about because the media today is a bunch of cowards and they will not share with you the truth. Muslims only. Christians only. This is a Muslimic website. Why non-Muslims cannot enter Mecca? Why? The Quran says, the verse in the front of us, because we are dirty. As simple as that. And this is supposedly the ethic of Allah. Allah is an ethical God. You see those liberals in USA and in the West, they always defend Islam. But why they defend Islam, I have no idea. The Muslim they speak about South Africa and how the white people they were discriminating the black they have buses for the black alone and they have buses for the white alone until today they have a big signs in Saudi Arabia it says Muslims only non-Muslims from here if you take the wrong entrance and you go into the Muslim only zone you are dead your blood is free to be slaughtered like a chicken. This is what is the ethic of Allah. Why, why those liberals in USA, Nancy Pelosi and Sasusi and Fasusi, and all the garbage we see in TV? Why nobody dare to speak against this? They call things racist when it is not racist, but now they have Muslims in the Congress, and why the Muslims who they are in the Congress today, the Democrat, they brought two women. How come they don't dare to say that this is filthy and this is racist? What kind of cult teach that if you are not a Muslim, you are not clean? To the point, not only we cannot enter the mosque, I understand if you say, okay, this is our mosque, why you want to enter it anyway? Okay. The whole city of Mecca and Al-Madina, we cannot go there. You cannot even get to close. Muslims only. Not only we are any clean, no. The Muslims, they have a duty to conquer us and to slaughter the men and to take the women as sex slaves and the children as servants. The Quran ordered the Muslims to force the, the Christians and the Jews specifically, because if you aren't a Christian or a Jew, you will be killed immediately. If you are a Christian or a Jew, you have an opportunity to live if you pay money. But how you pay the money to live? The Muslim, they say to you, well, we are protecting you, protecting us from, from who? From us. So you are the killer and you are the protector. So if you don't want to die, pay the jizya. The Muslim, they say to you, the jizya is just a tax. Big fat lie. The jizya is enforced to keep the Christians and the Jews poor, working for the Muslims, making the Muslims rich, and their belly is full, and we are working like donkeys for them. And why they are fighting us, the Quran explained, not as the Muslim, they say, oh, the Roman attacked the Prophet. The fact is the opposite. Muhammad, he sent letters to three kings saying convert or else.
And here in front of you, this is their own Islamic interpretation for the verses. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah, nor in the last day. Who are they? Because they don't believe. That's the, the, the story in front of you. And you will see because Muhammad is a greedy man and he loves money and he worship money. He accepts you to live even if you don't believe in his God. As long you pay him the jizya, which is penalty. When the Muslim they say to us, this is just a tax. Well, if this is a tax, why people they have to beat it with him to, to pay it with humiliation? Why we have to pay it with humiliation? Why you are pay, why you are forcing me to pay you and you took my land? You took my land, you took my house, and now I have to pay you to live. Imagine if George Bush he forced everyone in Iraq to pay him or you die. Or in Afghanistan, pay or die. That is the ethic of Islam. You will see here it says, this is honorable ayah was revealed with the order to fight the people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews. After the pagan were defeated, Muhammad now he is free from enemies. He's looking for new enemies. He called all his those who oppose him from the Arab, who they are not Christians or Jews. So now we can turn our face and start killing the Christian and the Jews. When the victory came, People, they enter in large numbers into Islam because they are fearing for their life. And the Arabian Peninsula was secured under Muslims' control. And here you will see the hypocrisy of the unethical prophet. When he was weak, he did not want to kill the Christian. He never says, I want to kill you in the future. But now, as long as the Arabian Peninsula is under the control of Muhammad, let us kill the Christians, let us kill the Jews. Allah commanded his messenger to fight the people of the scriptures. It was Allah command. The Jews and the Christians on the ninth years of Hijrah. And he prepared his army to fight the Roman. And he called the people to jihad. You see, they lie to you. They say that the Roman is the one who attacked him. It's a big fat lie. And here you see that Muhammad he have a failure actually, he could not attack the Roman. He took more than 30,000 and he could not do it. But then after that, the Muslims, they continue in the ethic of Islam to kill Christians as many as they can and to rape their women. They pay the jizya until they do, because they do not choose to embrace Islam. Would willing a submission defeat? This is not a tax as they lie to you and feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, and you have to dishonor the Christians and the Jews. Therefore, the Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhimma. People of the Dhimma is those who pay money to live, which means the Christian and the Jews, they call them people of the Dhimma. Or elevate them, elevate them above the Muslims. A Muslim is not even allowed to respect you or to honor you. For you are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. And look at the ethic of the Prophet. The Prophet said, Don't initiate salam to the Jews and the Christians, and if you meet any of them in the road, force them to walk in the narrowest alley. Which means, if a Muslim walking in the street, and a Christian coming from the other side, the Islamic ethic is to force the Christian to jump in the sewage. The narrow alley here is the sewage. In the old days, the sewage is open in the side of the street. Water come from the houses and run in that tunnel in the side of the road. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing to see the Islamic ethic? So they lie to us and they say Islam and they brag as an example. The, the Muslim, if you ask any Muslim, they will say to you, do you know Umar al-Khattab? Umar al-Khattab, he refused to pray in the church. It's called the church of Al-Qiyamah. 
So the Muslim will not take it. He just admitted that if the Muslim pray inside a, ch a church, they take it. That's it. We say we pray in it. It's ours. Omar al-Khattab did not do that because he feared that that will make a big problem for him and the Christians from Europe, they will come for invasion immediately. It's not because he want to protect the church. And the proof of that, the church was closed and the Muslim, they throw garbage in the front of it and they change the name in Arabic from the Church of Al-Qiyamah, which means the Church of Resurrection, to the Church of Qumama, and that is in Ibn Kathir. The Church of Qumama, which means the Church of Garbage. For centuries, the Muslims throw garbage on the church. And here you will see that uh, uh, Umar al-Khattab, the Muslim, he called him the most honorable, the leader, may Allah bless him, the most just. He demand his will, known condition to be met by the Christians. Those conditions that ensure their continued humiliation, disgraced. And you can read the Pact of Umar, which is very filthy. That is the ethic of Islam. A Christian, he have to open his house, his door for any Muslim to eat, to sleep for three days. Our churches have to open for any Muslim for three days. A Christian, he have to shave his head to look funny. A Christian, he cannot wear a cross unless it is more than nine kilograms or even more. The, the Christian, they cannot ride a donkey facing the head of the donkey. They have to face his ass. The Christians, the Christian, they humiliate him. As you see, it's not me who's saying that. To ensure the continued of their humiliation. Yet they lie to us and they lie to you and they say, oh, Jizya was nothing but tax. The ethic of Islam is, as we heard, not only to abuse the Christians, even to abuse Muslims. Muhammad, he made chapter saying, any Muslim woman, she want to give herself to the Prophet, she can give her herself so he can if her. And the Muslim, they lie and they say to marry her. A man, he have 13 women in his beds, and God knows how many sex slaves. Why he need to make a chapter saying, any believing woman, she can give her vagina to him. Is he short of vagina? That is the ethic of Allah. The ethic of Allah that he is going to give us women in heaven and he described for us how big their breast. Not only how big their breast and how firm and how nice they are, even Muhammad God, he described for us what is inside their vagina. We have a God who is very much ethical to the point he is tempting us by breast and vaginas. And for sure, this God is all about ethic. I mean, how we can say he is not teaching ethic, my friend? How dare you? No one can say such a thing. Allah is very ethical. As you see, we are showing you Islamic interpretation and translation, which most of it is really absolutely full of lies. But still, we are using their translation to get the ethical of Islam explained. This is a God who explained to us that if you believe in him, if you kill for his sake, if you join ISIS, if you join Al-Qaeda, if you explode yourself, Allah will give you such a vagina, which no one used before you. And not only that, each time you have sex with those women, Allah will put his finger there and he will make them virgin again. I advise you to read my books so you can learn more about this. In this case, you can buy or order six and Allah, variant number one and variant number two. This God, he is very careful 
to bring us women have zero mileage and the skin inside their vagina never been used yet never been touched and he is very careful to mention and describe for us what is inside the vagina because this God is very ethical and the funny the Muslim they say to us did you read the song of songs the song of song is not God talking you idiot it's a poetry of a man describing his city it might look like for you it's sexual and even if it's a sexual this is a king making a point and those who wrote it they are honest they put it as there as it is and it's not even about women he described his city as a beautiful woman this is not God talking this is not God teaching this is a man describing and because the Jews they were honest they did not change a letter on it here what we see this is supposedly not Muhammad talking not David talking not Solomon talking this is your God that is the ethic of Allah the ethic of Allah that in the heaven of Allah we will have little tiny boys and they will be looking I will look like pearls What kind of God who have an ethic? He promised me that in the heaven, in his heaven, I am going to have little boys. And according to Muslims, those are not for sex. Okay, they are for what? A brother, they are to serve you. To serve me? The ethic of Allah is very 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 disgusting to the point he is going to jail little boys in my house 80,000 little boy to serve me for eternity the ethic of Allah is to be a child abuser if Allah arrived in New York he will be arrested immediately In heaven, we have little boys who they are everlasting boys and they are very sexy like pearls. Well, why you are surprised? The prophet himself is a child abuser and he is a sex offender and he is a child molester and he is a child rapist. The Muslims, they defend their prophet marrying six years old a child and they say at that time it was okay i am an arab and we never heard of such an okay if we continue about what they call ethic you will go crazy I'm planning to go online again later. So today I'm not going to stay long for this video so you can download it fast and easy. And we will be back later. I will announce what time. Uh, and we can continue on this topic. But my message today to the Christians, to the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhas, the atheists, everybody, don't make the Muslims fool you. There's no ethic in Islam. The ethic of Islam is the same as a white sheet designed to fit with Muhammad ethic, which a man without ethic at all. A man with ethic will not say any woman she want to give herself to me so I can F her. He have already many wives. What that will do to Islam? What that will accomplish to Islam by saying that any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet? What that have to do with the religion? Ask yourself, why Allah is so interested to make verses that any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet so he can F her? Any believing women she want to offer herself 
and dare the other word to marry her. What a lie. It doesn't say marry her. It says to if her. And this is as a privilege only to the Prophet, not for the believers. Muhammad have a privilege in the Quran that he will have the best of booties. He will have the fifth of every attack. He will have the most beautiful women in the top of that. Even women who they are Muslims, if they wish to give their vagina to the Prophet, they are welcome. Actually, if we go and read the interpretation and we showed you before, they say, the Muslims say, not me, that if the Prophet eyes fall into a woman, her husband, he must divorce her immediately. So her, the Prophet, he can have her and if her. You believe it? The ethic of Allah Prophet, that if his eyes fall into a woman, the husband, he have to divorce her immediately so he can have her. And this is what happened exactly with his son and his wife, Zainab. Today we shared with you some of the ethic of the Prophet of Islam and his religion. And I am sure today you have full stomach of ethic because obviously Islam is about ethic. They try to fool us and they show you a verse in the Quran says, be nice to the orphan. Be nice to the orphan by having sex with them. Have you ever heard of a God teaching that be nice with the orphan by having sex with them? How that can be? Islamic charity saying, if you cannot be nice with the orphan, then go F2 and the 3 and 4. Are you sure? So the charity of Muhammad is to sleep and have sex with little children and they are orphaned. That is the charity. My friend, don't make them fool you with what they call charity. They don't have any. I saw a woman from Al Bosnia, and first time I met her, her name is a Muslim name. So I start talking to her as a Muslim, and then she said to me, "You, I think you think I'm a Muslim." I said, "Aren't you?" She said, "No, I used to be." And all my because her children, she have children like Ahmed and Muhammad and etc. She said, "We used to be Muslims, but we left Islam." I said, "What happened?" They said, "In Al Bosnia during the war." I went to an Islamic charity. I stood in the line for more than four hours. It was snowing, cold, freezing. My children are dying from hunger. We have no food for a few days. And then when my time arrived to get my share of the charity of Islam, Islamic Saudi charity, the guy in the door of the tent, he said, why you are not wearing hijab? And he kicked her out with her children. Then she went out and some women, they said to her, let us give you a hijab. You wear it and you stand in the line, but wait until this guy, he go and the new guy come. So he will give you the food. She put the hijab. She waited for other eight hours until that guy, his shift is gone. And now she go in the line again. When her time arrived, the guy in the front door, he went down to the child, the small one. He said to him, do your mom pray? The child, he's honest. He said, no. The guy, he kicked her out from the line. And then she said she heard that there is a Christian charity in the other side of the town. So she decided to walk there. She went to the Christian charity and she said, honest to God, they never asked me any question. They knew I'm a Muslim. They welcome us, they give us a blanket, they warm us, they give us a tent. They give us medicine right away, the doctor, he saw us and they gave us food and we stayed there for a couple of months and nobody asked me a question, what is your religion?
and then I became a Christian. Because I said to myself, the God of those people is the true God. Don't tell me about your charity. Your charity is the fifth. The Lord, the Messiah, our Savior, he says, love your enemy, pray for them. That is above all charities. Because the person who can pray to his enemies, what about he will feed them to? Take care of them. Show love and protection. Not a man who says, if you want to do charity, have sex with the orphan. My charity, I will have sex with your wife. My charity, I will kidnap your women and your children. My charity is to rape you and take money from you and force you to humiliation. My charity, even in heaven, is faith. If you remember, we have a debate with Muslims. You can search right now in YouTube. Where a Muslim, he admitted that the ethic of Islam is beyond imagination to the point when you go to the heaven of Allah, you lose all your ethic to the point you can have sex with your mother. Islamic ethic is not what people think. Sex with the mother? How in the world anyone can say such a thing? I can make and you in the bed and you don't see that there's something wrong with that. Why do you think there's nothing wrong with it? Okay. Yes. Well, okay, so you can have your voice. What do you want to say to us, yes. Mr. Russ? Why are you upset? You say you, you, the you said you said this Nothing guy is, is a fraud. Sin in heaven. Huh? Nothing is sin in heaven. Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. In heaven, you can have sex with a goat. It's fine for you, right? Not nothing sin. There's no nothing sin. You can sin. you yeah. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can have, you are proud about having sex with your mother. You and your father, you will have sex with the same woman, which is your mother. Anything, anything is fun. Everything comes from God in heaven. No problem. So in the heaven of Allah, you will have a threesome, you and your father and your mother in the bed. Okay. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. What do you not understand about nothing is sin? Well, I, sin I, I'm just trying to understand, my friend. You see, I'm not smart like listen. you. We think it's sin due to our social okay. structure. If, if, they, if they can make, I'm not trying to insult, by the way. I'm not trying to insult. Don't take me wrong, please. You know, I, I have not, I don't know you. Are. Okay, no, I'm not trying to insult. If Zach and Naik, he want to have sex with your sister, and you like your sister, so are you willing you and Zach and Naik to have share to share your sister together? In this case, Zach and Naik mm -hmm. in heaven, mm -hmm. he would have a situation in which he could. He could. So you and your sister and you Zach and Naik in one bed. But it it wouldn't be my. It would be wouldn't be my sister. Why not? In heaven. Think of it as anything can happen. Oh, anything can happen. So your sister, it's possible that you and Zach and Naik having sex with your sister at the same time. That's amazing conclusion. I mean, what I can say, this is beautiful, my friend. I'm really in touch. I'm thinking now to convert to Islam. And can you tell me what is the wisdom behind this? Why? Why your sister and Zach and Naik and you in the bed and you don't see that there's something wrong with that? Why do you think there's no, nothing wrong with that? Look, okay, I, due, due to our social like structure and morals, mm. yes, it's wrong. Mm. But when you get to heaven, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Hmm. Yes. What if what if somebody want to have sex with the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him? If it's in heaven, yes. So the Prophet, he will take off his panty, he will bend over, and we will see somebody doing him from his behind. In my in my heaven, yes. Okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> my friend, we just gave you an example of the ethic of Islam. I'm sure this ethic is wonderful. Sex with your mother, your sister, your daughters, leave some for some, five some. Even the prophet, his anus is a target for the Abdul. Because in heaven, there is no sin. Allah drop all the ethic. In heaven, it's a sex house. It's a hippie house. That is Islam, my friend. So don't make them fool you with what they call ethic. Thank you very much, guys, for being here. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord, Islam is false, and we will see you soon again. Thank you. Take care.